Good morning, adventurers. My name is Munyaka Njiru from Bucket List Adventures. And today we are we're going to be addressing one of the questions that we've been receiving from you every time. And this is just how to get started on this hiking spot. And today I'm going to be showing you the different types of gear that you need. Because we always say, Shamuhimu ni nini? Ni summit. But uh, just like this beautiful t-shirt from Peperuka tells me that Chamuhimu ni summit, we need to make sure that you don't get there when you are looking like a chicken that has been rained on. We need to make sure that when you get there, you're looking good. Uh, you look like the best hiker in your village. And so today I'm going to take you through all the hiking gear that you would need. And at the end of it all, I'm also going to show you a bit of what you need from the whole uh, selection for a day trip. So to start, I'll, I think I'll move from, to be more a bit more consistent and organized, I'll move from in and out, and then going from up, top to bottom. So the first thing that you need, let's look at the, to get yourself warm, and especially if you're going to the high mountains, is uh, your base layers. Now the first base layer, of course, is your underwear. And uh, for me personally, we prefer, I recommend people not to use any cotton underwear. And this is what I personally use, the boxers, it's spandex material or polyester. And this means that uh, when you sweat, it quickly dries off. Because the more, if you use cotton, it means your, 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 it absorbs the sweat and when it evaporates, it leaves you cold. Eh? So that's the first layer. Your underwear, make sure they're not cotton. The second uh, layer that uh, is also the best layer is the thermal trousers. Now these thermal trousers, it's like your regular tights, but if you look inside, you have that warm, cold gear cover. That, uh, and most of them also would have uh, a, a, a sign that says that it's cold gear. And also on the same, my Under Armour top, which is the base layer, is also has a cover, a lining inside that makes, makes it uh, warm for you when you're up on the mountain. So that's your top and your bottom for the thermal. That's the base layer. The next, uh, from there we move on to the outer uh, tops. Uh, whether you take a short sleeved or a long sleeved, this is what you need for your t-shirts. This is a quick dry t-shirt. And the good thing is that, again, it's easy to dry up. And uh, same material, polyester, spandex. And this is a long sleeved version. So depending on what you prefer, you can take a long sleeved or a short sleeved. Now moving on to the same, uh, uh, on, your, on, on, the to on the upper part of your body also, we have your fleece. And the fleece is just uh, your, uh, uh, to keep you more warmer and it goes above your t-shirt and uh, under your jacket. So your fleece, and then after the fleece comes in the jacket. Now I prefer, this is what we call, is this a soft, soft shell or a hard shell? They are soft shell jackets and hard shell jackets. So I prefer uh, uh, these jackets as opposed to buying a very bulky poncho or rain gear. And the reason for that is when you go to the high mountains, you tend to have a lot of wind. And when there's a lot of wind, you would need uh, at least uh, a maneuverability to use your arms. Eh? And if you look at most of this, like this one is very nice, it even has uh, zips here for aeration. So if you're feeling a bit hot, you can uh, uh, take down, uh, I mean, open the zips. And then if you look at the zip, uh, the pockets, they're also waterproof. Even the zips are waterproof. And this goes on very well, snugly on you when you go into the mountain. So I prefer this because you can hold, use your arms as opposed to the poncho, which is flying all over you and you can't really do much with it. Now just when I'm still there, it's good to note that the more you go up the mountain, you need to understand the concept of layering. 
So all the so the first thing is your inner layer, which is the thermal, and then if you feel a bit cold, you put on your fleece, and then after the fleece, now you add on your your shell jacket. I prefer this layering setup as opposed to a very big bulky limuru or kimenda style jacket. Eh? So please stick to the layering. Now going on a bit to the uh, bottoms, again we started with the uh, underpants, then you have your layer, your thermal layer, now we have our walking pants. So I see many people, I know ladies prefer doing tights, but when you're going to the high mountains and also for your regular hikes, uh, just get yourself nice walking pants. Uh, this one is waterproof, some are not waterproof. They have proper, well, and very nice zips that you can throw in your phone and your snacks. And some even have a, a part where you can remove and it becomes a, a, a trouser, uh, I mean shorts or a, or, or a trouser. Make sure that this fit well. And something else I also noticed is that they are very notorious for splitting here. So make sure if you've bought some new hiking pants, uh, make sure that you test them appropriately. To help you you can get some more fancy ones like this this is a fancy codry type uh, hiking gear if you like your photos looking as good as the people on instagram now on top of there the, 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 on the on the bottoms there are three types this is your normal walking pants on top of it you can put your rain trouser it's light and it's rainproof so this one you put it in the back and when need be you remove it and throw it on top. Now if you're going to the very high mountains, you can use a combination of a walking trouser and a light rainproof trouser to summit. You can use a combination of a walking trouser and a light rainproof trouser to summit or you can use a summit pant. Summit pants is, is uh, just a, a heavy ski trouser. Like this one is a ski trouser. It's uh, waterproof on the outside and it still has a lot of uh, warm sort of like fiber inside that keeps you warm. So that's your summit pants. Now from there I think I've, we've handled uh, your uh, tops and bottoms. I'll now move on to the accessories. The first accessories, or oh, first we go down to the feet, and the most important item for a hiker is your socks. So you need to look for very nice warm woolen socks. These ones are a bit a uh, few years old, but still doing the job. How to look at, for them? Uh, if you look on the inside again, you have this warm, uh, I don't know what the material is called, but it's fairly, fairly nice woolen material inside. So that's your socks and if you have bad socks it means you will get blisters so please take uh, very good uh, socks with you today I don't have very uh, I don't have the big boots I have mid cut boots uh, this is actually a low cut boot and again uh, Vibram sole very nice uh, sole and it's waterproof Goltex material and of course there are people who prefer now the mid cut boot that gets you gets up to here and of course the high cut boots so please make sure that again it's the good sizing and please test it before you go to the high mountains and don't force the size of the shoe there is a common misconception or, or advice that I see people giving about boots that they should be one size bigger which I find a bit uh, de uh, confusing I find it misleading because I, 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 I always tell people, get a nice pair of warm socks and test the shoes that you're, you're buying. Because you might choose one size bigger, again, it becomes, your foot becomes too loose and it's moving in the, in the shoes. And that's uh, the, 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 the easiest way to get your blisters on. So if, you, if you're buying a shoe, just fit to the right size. Make sure the foot moves a bit inside, there's a bit of space. So that when you're doing the descents, you won't be going very, you won't be hurting your toes. 
So out from the to come along with the booths is what we call gaiters. Now gaiters are quite important because they come they are worn on the space like between your if you have your boot the gaiters come between your boots and your shin or your like slightly below the knees eh? and their work is to prevent stones and rocks from getting into the shoes and if you're going through a lot of bush also they make sure that uh, water and uh, uh, dew and stones don't get into your shoes I think that's that's uh, it for the footwear. Now moving on to the accessories. I'll move on to a few accessories that uh, also help you in the mountains, especially the high peaks. The first part is your hydration. This is a standard hydration uh, hydration bladder. This one is two three liters, so you can get a two liter one or a three liter one. And uh, this one helps you when you're going up to carry water and you can sip as you walk. Again, for the high peaks, we have the hot water thermos or flask. And this one helps you when you're doing the overnight or, overnight or long climbs in cold places. It can keep your water warm. And especially on the summit night where you need, sometimes your camel bag can freeze eh? or your hydration bag can freeze. The water can freeze and you need some hot water to substitute. So that one is very important. A comfort item purely for people who like the soft life. This is a hot water bag that you put, you can use in your sleeping bag. Just put hot water and you have a warm night on the mountain. I move on to the a, a few things that are concerning with the head. This This here are different types of uh, protection for your for your head from cold and wind. This here is a balaclava. A balaclava can be woolen, can be spandex material, but it comes in very handy when you're going up to keep you warm from the neck and from the wind. And it's very important. You can also use this as a warm hat going back to your head like that and covering your ears. And there's this one for the ears. I don't know why humans feel cold fast in the ears, but this one is really nice. Uh, warm heart again, uh, like the snow hearts, and you can feel like you're in the winter countries. And then next is the sun hat. This is very important, especially for the day hikes. Prevents your sunburns, you from sunburns, and all those uh, other elements out there. For your, for your hands, you need two types of gloves. This here are uh, just warm gloves and the, this, this one is important because you can use them around camp in the cold peaks and you can like eat with them. But when you're going up the summit, you need to look for proper waterproof and padded uh, gloves that are ski gloves. So these ski gloves are what you use for the, for the high peaks. When you're going like to the summit and uh, and such and such. Now move to the last set of items, and the first one is your sleeping bag. You need to look for a nice sleeping bag and invest in one. They're not, I, I mean, mo most of the good sleeping bags are quite can be quite expensive, 150, 200 dollars or more. And what you need to do for most mountains, if you get a sleeping bag that is minimum minus 7 rating all the way to minus 20 you can do most of the mountains both in East Africa and uh, most of the other peaks below 6,000 meters so your sleeping bag then we have the bags and this first one this this is your uh, day pack they vary from different things They're from different they have good storage across uh, look for if it has space to put your hydration bladder inside. Like you can put it inside, like a uh, like like space to put your hydration bladder, and look if it has good aeration. And then, last but not least, padding. 
and of course the straps that come at the lower section they're very good for support so your day bag should be average of i would say 25 or 30 liters to 40 liters on the higher side on top of that you need your big bag which is your potter's bag this should be anything from 50 50 liters 60 liters depending on your, your, your the things you're carrying and also the mountain that you're going to. Remember also when you have these bags make sure they have a rain cover that is normally put at the bottom. This is your rain cover so when it rains you just put it over your over your bag and continue walking. Remember you don't have umbrellas in the mountain. The last thing that I want to insist on and it's not on many people, they leave it to us, the guides to carry is the first aid kit. Please have your own personal first aid kit. It can have different things. Maybe I can go just uh, very briefly on what, but we, we can do an, we'll do another video on this. But mostly I make sure I have at least crepe bandages to take care of any injuries that we get. I would uh, definitely put some sort of a pain relief cold spray on it. Uh, stuff like Imodium tablets to help you with diarrhea and other stomach upsets. Definitely some painkillers, painkillers on it. Uh, and then uh, stuff to help with wounds. That can be cotton wool. Uh, this I think is elastoplast or surgical tape. Elastoplast to help you with with, uh, with the wounds and an array of uh, things to deal with wounds like gauze swabs. I think here there's a plaster, fabric plaster, and of course antihistamines, especially if you're going out with kids. Uh, tweezers, your regular first aid kit, and most importantly nowadays we always, especially for the mountains, we always carry a pass oximeter. This one is, uh, uses batteries and you can use it up on the high mountains to get your oxygen level right. It goes for only 2,500, so make sure if you're going for a hike, check if your hiking company has this. If they are not, they probably don't know what they're doing. Alright, so that's your simple first aid kit. Of course, uh, the other things like uh, gloves to clean wounds. And I believe we can share a more comprehensive list on your first aid kit on that. So that is, ladies and gentlemen, is your standard hiking kit. Now these things look, uh, feel like they are a lot, but please just get them step by step. And by the end of it, you'll find that it's easy to acquire all the items. For the day hike, uh, just as quick summary, the things you need when you're going for a day hike in your bag, that's your hiking bag. And you need something to carry your water, that's your hydration bag. And then you need something to cover your head with, that's the sun hat. And then you can get your rain jacket and then your rain trousers. Here's uh, my rain trousers. My rain trousers. And then your snacks and everything else that you would need on a day hike. So these are the most important things. Rain gear, sun hat. Uh, hydration and your bag to carry your bag thank you and see you on the mountain see you on the next hike <laughs> before I leave you remember if it's not on Strava or if it's not on Garmin or if it's not on if it wasn't recorded then it probably didn't happen so you need to think about when you're going out you can get some nice uh, tracking gadgets for yourself I have myself here a Garmin Phoenix 6 X Pro from Run Beyond Shop. And with the Garmin, you can have 14 days of power when you go out in the wild. You're able to measure your hike or your run, and you can come back and report how long it was and give the route and share the route with someone else who's going to be on the trail next. So, let's see you on the next hike. And again, don't forget to visit our calendar www.bucketlist.co.ke www.bucketlist.co.ke kusema w ni ngumu bana kwa mwebu bana eh